Okay, today's devotion is from Acts chapter 21, verses 27 through 36. I've titled this, Another Slanderous Charge. False assumptions and jumping to conclusions. Didn't we read about this in Acts chapter 19, when the whole city of Ephesus went into a near riot? That sound familiar? Well, let's look at today's verses and see what we can find. Verses 27, 28, and 29. When the seven days were almost completed, the Jews from Asia, seeing him in the temple, that's Paul, stirred up the whole crowd and laid hands on him and crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man who is teaching everyone everywhere against the people and the law in this place. Wherever he brought Greeks into the temple has defiled the holy place. For they had previously seen Trophimius, the Ephesian, with him in the city, and they supposed that Paul had brought him into the temple. Now, Jews from Asia. Asia is the Roman province, uh, also known as Asia Minor, and the city of Ephesus is located in Asia. Now, these Jews were obviously aware of Paul's work, and they hated him. And they recognized him in the temple, and they had also recognized him in the city with Trophimius, who they also recognized as being a Gentile from Ephesus. Trophimius is first mentioned in Acts chapter 20, verse 4. You might remember that he is one of the seven escorts uh, chosen to accompany Paul to Jerusalem with the offering for the Jewish church. Now, these Jews from Asia were so stirred up by seeing Paul in the inner court of the temple that they seized Paul and with loud cries for help, as though it was Paul who was assaulting them, to come help them protect the temple. Now, the first charge they brought forward was that Paul was attacking the Mosaic law, attacking the temple, and attacking the people of Israel. That was one threefolded charge there. The second one was that he was bringing Greeks, now that's a generic term for pagans, into the temple. Now they use the plural of the word even though their evidence was based on a supposition, based on a single observation of one individual with Paul together outside of the temple complex. Pretty shaky ground. Is it possible that these Jews from Asia perhaps seldom came to the temple or into Jerusalem and were trying to appear more zealous in order to atone for their habitual neglect of attending temple services? It's possible. Okay, let's look at verse 30. Then all the city was stirred up, and the people ran together. They seized Paul and dragged him out of the temple, and at once the gates were shut. This seems very similar to what we read about in the riot in Ephesus. Men who won't volunteer for good causes sure are eager to defend bad ones. And notice that they are more concerned with polluting the temple than the act of committing murder. The closing of the temple gates was likely done by the Levites, and it could have been to prevent defilement of the temple by the shedding of blood, or it could have been that they believed the defilement that the, Paul was accused of, and they had to perform purification rites. Now, verses 31 through 33. And as they were seeking to kill him, word came to the tribune of the cohort that all Jerusalem was in confusion. He at once took soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. And when they saw the tribune and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Then the tribune came up and arrested him and ordered him to be bound with two chains. He inquired who he was and what he had done. Now, this disturbance was soon known by the Roman tribune, or the general if you prefer. A riot was an unforgivable sin in Roman territory and both the population that stirred it up, as well as the Roman commander who allowed it, would be taken care of, not very favorably. Within seconds, the Roman soldiers and their general were underway. Now, the name of the Roman tribune was Claudius Lysias. You can find that in Acts chapter 23, verse 26. And as soon as the frenzied mob saw the tribune, they temporarily calmed down and quit beating on Paul temporarily. The two chains the tribune had ordered were 
on Paul were likely because he was to be chained between two guards. Now, verses 34 through 35. Some in the crowd were shouting one thing, some another. And as he could not learn the facts because of the uproar, he ordered them to be brought into the barracks. Verse 35, and when he came to the steps, Paul, he was actually carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the crowd. Now, the Roman tribune could get no reliable information from the mob. They were too ruled by their passions, let alone facts. There was no quelling their rage and their fury. Paul had to be carried up the stairs to be protected. Otherwise, he probably would have been torn limb from limb. Now, verse 36, the cry. For the mob of the people followed crying out, away with him. Do those words sound familiar? Well, they're recorded in Luke chapter 22, verse 18, and also in John chapter 19, verse 15. These are the words that the crowd said to Pilate concerning Jesus. Away with him, crucify him. Okay, we got some takeaways from this. Um, they're kind of generic, but they're still truths. The first one is, true Christians are known by the blessings which flow from their works. But this also makes them easy to identify by the enemies of Christ and distinguish them from false prophets or faithful, unfaithful zealots. The second one is Christians are watched closely and they must be circumspect, circumspect in their work as well as the people they associate with. Number three, God can, will, and has used ungodly people to protect his servants at just the right time. And the fourth one, innocence is no protection against false charges. But God can, will, and has used both the scorn and contempt by ungodly people to bring his faithful servants to light and out of obscurity. Thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying these devotions as we continue in Acts.